There you go, folks. There you go. <laughs> if you, uh, listen, I say risky sentences. If that didn't touch your heart, I don't think we're the church for you. I'm saying that to church members. What kind of pastor says that? If that did not touch your heart, you're not connected to me. It's just, just no. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Shekinah Worship Center. Because you have followed God's servant, we are blessing people around the halfway around the world literally from where they've come from cooking outside with one a rock to now having where they can cook inside from one bedroom where we did the zoom to now a fellowship a hole that holds 200 children you did that god used us to god be the glory hallelujah great things he has done and you wonder why i want to get back to kenya my lord oh lord i got got to should the lord jesus tarry we desire to be able to see this place this space and these people for ourselves face to face brother paul again i want to say well well, well done well done your first time ministering heartfelt understood we got it you're going to hear about it in a little bit yet the first thing i i know you've prayed yet i want to do a covering prayer over you before we go to what we call our elders corner and hear some thoughts about what a couple of our elders um just received from the word that god gave to you let's pray again folks father thank you again thank you for your servant thank you for his heart Thank you for his ability. All of this you gave, God, and you planned. And God, therefore, above all, we honor you, your purpose, your plan, your destiny. God, that we will be your hands and we will give. We will be your body and we will have the heart to feel, to serve. Because this is what it's about. And so we thank you for the sermon, the word of God that has been ministered by our brother Paul. And we thank you for his heart, God. And and for him giving himself, not only to the word, but the mission of the word. He, he has literally put hands and feet to the word of God in serving the children. Father, we ask you continue to bless Great Hope Children's Home. Make it a blessing continuously uh, that children will grow up in the word and understand what you've called them to do. God, thank you again for this word. Thank you for our brother Paul. Continue to give increase. Cover him with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Keep him, God, in all of his ways. This is our prayer. And we all say, amen, amen. And there we are. There we are. All right. Well, at this time now, we are going to call um, two of our elders. We're going to start with our... Elder Reverend Dr. Wendy Woods, and she's going to join us on screen right here. Amen. And she's going to open her mic. Thank you, Elder Doctor. Share with us. Bless. Good evening. Thank you, Pastor. Good evening, Shekinah family. And wow. Good evening, Brother Paul Kiprotek. What an honor and a privilege to hear you talk this evening, to hear your sermon, to hear your, your, your heart, really. Um, I can't begin to say how touched um, I, I was. We've seen pictures and uh, we've seen videos before of you and, and the children um, at the home. Um, but to, to hear you tonight was um, truly a blessing. So I will attempt to uh, <laughs> uh, share the nuggets that I got from your sermon, trusting in the word of God. And the first thing, the first word that stood out was believe. We have to believe that the Bible is indeed the very word of God. And if we believe that, we can then trust it and trust it. The word of God has power 
The word of God is power. We can trust it for all things. He told us that we can trust it for life. We can trust it for forgiveness, for decision-making and for provision. We can trust it. We can trust the word of God because God is faithful. God is faithful. And so we must seek God first, seek him with our whole heart and trust him with our whole heart. God is faithful. The word of God is the key. I loved this. The word of God is the key to every door. The word of God makes all things possible. And then I loved the analogy of the disciples on the boat and the storm came up. You liken that to the spiritual storms as we know that Storms will come, they will come. But he reminded us that we have to stay in the will of God. When the storms come, we, we're human beings. And so we will doubt, we will question, we'll complain. But the storms come to test our faith, to test our faith. And so we have to, we have to remain alert. And we have to stay faithful. He said we have to stay in the boat. And we stay in the boat because you know who's in the boat with us? Jesus. Jesus is in the boat. So stay in the boat. Stay in the will of God. Because when we stay in the boat, we stay in the will of God and we endure the storm, Jesus will calm the storm. When we endure the storm, we stay faithful. God will stay, save us. He will restore us. And so all we need to do is stay faithful and wait on the Lord. That just reminded me of one of my favorite Bible verses. Be still and know that I am God. Our trust is in God. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Paul. Thank you. You Really, really blessed us tonight. Thank you. May God continue to bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder Reverend Dr. Wendy Woods. And Paul, Paul, let me say, the plan is to get her up to Kenya, all right? So she's extra excited because she's like, I think I better get up there. So, <laughs> hey, man, yeah, that's the plan. And so God willing, we constantly have our ear to him on the timing. Um, again, and this is my school buddy, too. I will tell you that we went and graduated in school from this same school. And so it's a blessing to have her on board and more so to have her excited about what God is doing. That's the key. Stay in the boat. Thank you, Doc. Appreciate that. And now we're going to call forth someone that I, yeah, wow, she's been, yeah, a few times. Come on, Superintendent. I got you. I'll, I'll get you on the spotlight. There you go. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Brother Paul, oh my goodness, I'm overwhelmed overwhelmed. I think a few of us felt the calm presence of the Lord in your message, that calm confidence that you had, the delivery. And I thank you for that. A few times I wiped my eye just feeling the presence of the Lord within you. And we continue to encourage you. There's a special blessing many times in the Bible about those who care for the widows and the orphans. And I just want you to know that God is continuing to bless you. I so I so loved when you said how you all you're out there and you don't know about all the resources, but God knew. Mm. Doesn't matter that you don't know, He knew. And as long as you stay in His will, He will bring the blessings to you. 
And um, I wrote a few things down. I was trying to balance working the Zoom and, and he listening to what you had to say. But, you know, we in Bermuda, you, you talked about the children saying they're going to Bermuda. The team here, because I'm in the chat, I've only been in, I've only been able to be um, live with you all once. But in the chat, they say, are we ready to go to Africa this week? Are we ready to go to Kenya? So they're traveling to Kenya and you're traveling to Bermuda. I will say this, um, I, I went to Kenya in 2018 and 2019. I bought this uh, bracelet in 2019. It says Kenya and it's got, and I have never ever taken it off because I want to go back and fellowship. Um, what a blessing. And I can't wait to meet you face to face. I just wanted to say that. Um, the things that touched me so much, um, and, and Doc, I, I ticked off what you spoke about so I don't repeat it, is um, the John 1, 1 through 3. I preached on that last week. So you're confirming uh, the word, the, the word was the, the world was made through the word, through the Lord. Uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. We're going through the book of Proverbs in our Sunday school right now. And Matthew 6, 33. Well, pastor knows, the church knows, that's her favorite scripture, that's mine. So this kinship that we have with you continues to speak loudly. And it's by no accident that we have this relationship. Um, I continue to bless you. What, what touched me um, so much of what you said, and I don't want to prolong it too long, uh, 1 Peter 5, where you uh, spoke about resisting the devil and the fact that we are a family of believers, and we're all going through the same thing. No matter what side of the Atlantic we're on, we are all going through spiritual warfare. It's the same thing. The devil goes about the entire globe, not just Bermuda, not just Nanuki, everywhere. And so we have to stand together as brothers and sisters, resist the devil. We're all going through, we will suffer. The, the scripture said we will suffer. So let's get it out of our minds that as Christians, we are not gonna have trials and tribulations, but we know who to go to. We know who to wait for, wait upon the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And your testimony has proven that. You went to bed with no food. I wrote down here, light switch, bed, mattress, and food. We don't have those problems here. For the main part, even those that are, are in poverty per se, we are blessed where we are. And to hear your testimony, I just thank the Lord so much that out of our abundance, we are able to share with you all. And, you know, we walk in the room, we turn on a light switch, we don't even think about it. And if it doesn't come on, we complain. It may be a fault or something, or we haven't paid the bill, but we complain. But just hearing your testimony through all of that, you all prayed, the, the clay houses and the wall almost falling down and you prayed and you prayed and God heard you. We're about to go through a Daniel fast. Daniel prayed and prayed and prayed and the angel was, his answer was delayed, but he kept praying. You all kept praying and God supplied and he continues to supply. And so Above all, you know, I, there was so much in, in your message, but those were the things as well outside of your message that touched me. And I pray that when Bermuda hears this, we will gain an appreciation for what God has blessed us with, and we won't be so tight on our resources that we can't share with others. Because God knows across the seas, there's someone who can benefit from what somebody on their knees praying for something that we can do. So I just want to thank you so much for your sacrifice. It's so late. It's early where you are now. Thank you for your sacrifice in sharing the word. Be encouraged. You, your parents, you are being blessed. You are taking care of the orphan. You are being blessed. I am blessed knowing I am helping to bless you, to bless those children. And I'm so thankful to Pastor Seaman for the connection 
that was made while we were in Kenya in 2019. May God continue to bless you as you continue to do his work in his that part of his vineyard. Love you much. Amen, amen. Thank you, Superintendent. And um, we don't have to ask, because you, you marked the date that we were supposed to travel this year. Had us all grieving here in Bermuda, because we weren't traveling. And then the day that we should have left it back. <laughs> Yet the work continues from one part of the world to the other. And I believe over there it's going on 3 a.m. I believe 3 a.m. Paul, Brother Paul, is it going on 3 or 2? 3. Mm. Yeah, you all think you're having a late night? <laughs> right. Say no more. <laughs> Look at God. Um, just so blessed. Uh, I'm going to share some of the chat and then I'm really not going to have much to say because I've spoken and these two elders have spoken. I will say something, but not to the sermon itself. And Pastor Randy, you know, I always give you an open mic moment. I'll do so after the chat. Let me run through them quickly. So some of what the folks you were saying, and uh, I'm, I'm just three or you know, we even we had to get a stronger internet service forum out there. Had to work with the lights and all types of stuff. But this is worth it. See, this is worth it. I don't know what else. This is worth it. My God, my God. All right. So we have our elder Trot, part of team team uh, Shekinah on Wednesday. She said, "Yep, God has the correct." connection and then of course our own reverend battersby superintendent you just heard her she said divine connections and you know let me say anytime you have a divine connection the enemy that roaring lion's gonna roar and listen now uh, i ain't trying to be super spiritual or deep if the if the lion roars i'm looking where it's coming from i'm going the other way okay so we need to pay attention to these things because now we're not speaking of a physical roaring lion. We're speaking to when the adversary comes in to tr listen, Shekinah, let me tell you something. The adversary, if he's trying to attack the work at Shekinah, this is what he's messing with with me, right? I'm, I'm bigger than, than Bermuda. You're bigger than Bermuda. I've got to focus on, this is not just, this is about uh, brother Paul. This is about, 44 45 children this is about 200 children that are going to be at camp at, at, at uh the hope camp when we do the teaching it's always bigger than us and so we cannot be focused on ourselves we've got to remember god made the connection that's that's who we owe it all to god made the connection amen uh elder dr wood she's saying uh godly connection uh, better, better than phones, internet, WhatsApp, Facebook. Come on, somebody. Oh, yeah. And when he does use it, he uses it to, to his glory, his excellence. Because he permitted man to, to come up with it, right? So God is still God above everything. And we thank God for this godly connection. Thanks, Doc. And then my sister, sister. My own very sister, Deaconess Allison Diane Russell, she says, trust God and believe. Faith. Boy, did we hear echoes of this morning or what, folks? I hope, I hope you remember this morning because this is what we heard. This whole stuff, this confirmation. Beautiful. Halfway around the world. Who can kick up about that? Confirmation. <laughs> All in the word. Amen. And then I saw you and you wrote this, uh, Brother Kenny Simons. He said, God is the man. And I must, you know, you know how I am. I am who I am. Let me tell you, God is no man. He is the manager of man. Come on, somebody. He was born in a manger, but he's the manager of man. Because I don't, <laughs> come on, sir. Yes, sir. Because I don't ever want to bring him down to our level. No, no, we've got to raise our level. And so he's the manager of man. And your spot on brother Kenny, soothing, calming, and comforting is the word of God. 
unlock and open the door and walk into the word of God. That's where we are secure. Thank you, Brother Kenny. God bless you for that. And then superintendent putting in the Bible um, reference. Thank you, Mark 34, 35 through 41. And then our superintendent's twin sister, hello, Reverend Jennifer, there she is. She said, storms will come. However, we are to what? Remain in the will of God. I loved that point. Amen. We remain in the will of God. If you're in the will of God and you're in that boat, God's will is not going to sink. Come on, somebody. So I'm staying with God. And what about you? I'm staying with God. Jan, I'm staying with God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Then my sister, sister, Allison, Deaconess Allison. Let's bring her back. She here? Okay. I don't, there she. <clears throat> Hi, Al. She's here. Um, Deaconess Allison said, God is, yeah, I saw when you wrote this. God is pushing the message. Will we pass the test, storms, to give the testimony? We must walk by faith and not by sight to be an example, to win souls for the kingdom. I mean, this message was slapping uh, us upside our head um, from this morning. God is, and listen, God is giving it directly to Shekinah. Don't miss it. So we all have to self-examine. Where am I not having faith? Where do I need to increase? All right. Uh, Reverend Stephen Trot says, Reverend Stephen says, devil comes in just like that dog barking, trying to distract you from the word. But we must continue to seek and trust God. He is in your boat. Yeah. And I, I did once I knew it was it, it, then the more you fo listen, the more you focus on the word, the more that song went in the back. It's like when some of you are walking up and down the church and I'm preaching. I just focus on the word. That's worse than a dog. Right. Mm, okay. Somebody, somebody, you know, my husband's laughing is in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pastor knows how to focus. That's what we do. Focus on the word. You, you give priority to what's first. Amen. Good comment right there. Our superintendent, Battersby, she's saying, what? Don't bail out. If Jesus is in the boat, whether he's sleeping, talking, whatever he's doing, if that's where he is, um, that's where I want to be. That, that's like where I want to be. Amen. Don't bail out. Then going back to our brother Kenny Simons, our brother Kenny says, we are not alone. Resist the devil. Come on. You bet. He got, he's going to try to mess with your mind by all the circumstances. And you've got to resist him. Amen. God bless you, brother Kenny. And Reverend Jennifer says, Reverend Jennifer says, Jesus calms the storm. <laughs> storm can kick up all in one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know you're cooler. Remember you used to say that? I know you're cooler. Mm, I know you're cooler. Jesus is our cooler. Ah, oh, whatever the storm, whatever the storm, whatever the storm, whatever the storm. I said, Jesus is the cooler. He'll calm the storm. Thank you, Reverend Jennifer. Back to our brother Kenny. And he says words that just speak and say it. God restores. That's it. That's it. Whatever you stand in need of. He's in the boat. It's his will. God restores. Amen. And then my sister, sister, our deaconess, Allison, she is saying, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Yes, he is. We must have faith and God will provide in his time. His timing is perfect. See, you see, we can't get mixed up on that. Well, 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 well. God's time is perfect because that's all God is. So when he shares up, that's perfect. And we survived. We made it until then. And it's showing up. Amen. And then our Reverend Jennifer is saying, yep, train up a child in the way he should go. And certainly we see that example at Great Hope. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've got so much video and footage of seeing children that are trained to work. Not work our nerves by asking for what they want, when they want. No, work. You see a two-year-old, a three-year-old going outside, cleaning, picking up rocks, whatever. 
and they're surviving. Golly gee. We want to reward, we in Bermuda want to reward real children. What are you doing? So they can be happy for Christmas Day and keep the peace. Ain't going to be no peace in my house. Ain't going to be no peace. I'm just trying to help some parent or grandparent out. No, we don't reward foolishness. We train them up. Because if we reward foolishness, we train them that you can act the fool and you're going to get your way. No, you won't. Not as an adult. So, Brother Paul, we're admiring that these children are being trained up in the way that they should go. And then we have loads of folks just saying, wow, very touching. Uh, let go and let God stay in the boat. Jesus is there. That's Dr. Woods right there. Amen. So we've had those comments. And um, I think everyone kind of, you know, of course I could go here. I've got pages of notes. Um, Pastor Randy, I had, you, know, you thought I forgot you had looked up. I saw that fur, that Alaskan fur. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, Pastor. Um, yes, most of everything's been covered um, very beautifully by uh, um, Elder, Dr. Elder Woods and, and Superintendent um, Battersby. But Brother Paul, um, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much for a word from God. And I thank you for the confirmation of the Holy Spirit connection. I mean, Elder Battersby spoke about that divine connection. And Pastor speaks about it a lot and how God connects all the people. And, and she said earlier, she's never met you face to face yet. But this is the divine connection. And then I think of that and I look at today, <laughs> today, your message has essentially been your testimony of how you are and your family trust in the word of God, and how it plays out in some everyday experiences in your life. Uh, and you use scripture to verify the importance of trusting in the word of God. But what stands out to me is the divine connection as it relates to Pastor Seaman's message this morning. Uh, uh, I'm a cry of black. And that, you know, she ran to the man of God to get a word from God. And then she took the word of God and was able to get her deliverance. But all of that, Sanders around having this position of faith. And Pastor had our three points in uh, a failing sight and a faith sight. And then obviously in the end, it was a full sight. But the faith aspect of trusting in God's word is what gets us through whatever we are facing. And you named off many situations that you and your family have faced, but that you took the position to live by faith and to trust God. And I get excited because my message today, my message today was called children's crumbs and a soft touch, reliant. The emphasis was on reliant, which was faith. How that we have to have faith in God's word. The, the Syro for Nisian woman had the faith of the children's crumbs that fell off the table that Jesus could fix her child that was demon possessed. The woman that had the issue of blood had the faith of a soft touch that God would change her situation around. All of it emphasizing that it's this trusting in God's word, it's this faith, it's this reliance in God's word that, 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 that you're brought to, together. This cry of lack that pastor started out with this morning and the faith aspect that brings it all to, together. We can't trust in God's word if we don't have faith. We see this in Mark 4. Mark 4, guess what the big miss is? The big miss is that they never took God's word. Because in verse 35, God gave the word. He gave the word and he went to sleep. The, the word that he gave them was, we're going over the other side. He didn't say that it wouldn't be a storm. He said, we're going to the other side and then sleep. They didn't hold on to that word. When the storm came, 
they start looking to get out of the boat and they start panicking. Mm -hmm. But God had already, Christ had already given his word while girling over the other side. Let's go over the other side and then sleep. They woke him up because of what was going on. They didn't trust in his word. Later on, it says in verse 41, then what manner of man is this that even the sky and even the storm listens to him? This is what happens when you trust in God's word. It was a beautiful message you, you gave today. Continue to let God use you. Continue to be encouraged as you live the testimony of trusting in God's word, exercising that faith, and relying on God to, to make the difference. We would be able to also sleep on a pillar once we got the word of God. If they would have took that word of God, they would have been able to be like Jesus and be laying down still sleeping on the pillar because he knew he was going on the other side. Despite these storms that will come, the Romans 8.28 lets them know I'm going over the other side. Continue to let God use you. Beautiful stuff. Amen. And may I say something, Pastor Stephen? <laughs> you reminded us, Brother Paul, that we serve a faithful God mm -hmm. and that our storm, there will be an end to the storm. Mm -hmm. The storm is not meant to break us. Praise God. It's, it's meant to help us to increase our faith in God. And the scripture that comes to me when I think of you, when I think of Brother Calvin, when I think of Mother Mary and Father John is Romans 4 and 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in the faith, giving glory to God. And that's your life's testimony. Continue to be encouraged. God bless you. And we love you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Pastor and Reverend uh, Lightborn, for adding to, to the night. It's been said, and because I'm very excited, I, I would just ramble on. And you all know that I'm just excited about what God is doing. And, you know, I've never done something. Put me on full screen here. Let's put on the gallery. All right. There you go. So, I need to know how to do it right, but and because I've never done it before. Who would be willing, watch this now, to join me and say that within the next four weeks, you're going to give $20 to Great Hope Children's Hand? In the next four weeks, that's a month. I missed a month. Let me take a snapshot. Hold on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, what you shaking your head at? Girl, don't make me. That's my original baby sister. She knows. Put your hands down. You don't want to know how many people. We have now covered, beyond covered, registering 200 children for the camp plus. All right? That's how you do, that's how you do it. And we won't starve for it. We won't lose one. I, let me speak to myself. If I know, if I would get up and walk, I might. But I ain't gonna lose no weight off of giving the twenty dollars. I ain't gonna lose not one bit of weight unless I get up and think of my sister and walk. Okay. Other than that, it's not happening. But when we give, the dollar, God is testing us. And we're going to continue to pass each test. Shekinah Worship Center, thank you for your giving. Those of you who are tuned in and who will listen to this in Bermuda, and if your heart is moved, just reach out to us, swim at logic.vm. Reach out. You know how to find me and say, I want to be a part of this. I tell you, I promise you, every penny that is earmarked for this home goes to this home because it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Oh, it has a joy. My cheeks are hurt, and I'm going to be in trouble. I'm going to be in trouble tonight. It's been a blessed night, church. Thank you, Shekinah, again, for your faithfulness, for your due diligence. When we take care of home, do what God has called us to do. This is how we impact the world. Looking outside of ourselves and doing great things. Oh, Brother Paul, again, thank you. We'll touch base this week. We'll, God will and see you on Wednesday uh, when we do our Zoom. But I'm sure we'll talk before then. Just know 
that your labor is, I know you know, it's not in vain. God is glorified. We're staying in the will of God. That's what we're going to do. It's the safest place. The safest place to be is in the will of God. Amen. Well, we're winding down. I'm going to call on our Reverend uh, Jennifer Oboy, and she is going to lead us out uh, in the benediction, folks. Let's join her. Mute it. Good evening. With the benediction, we depart to a life of consistent prayer. We depart to meditate on and study the word of God. We depart to obey the word of God in our daily lives. We depart to share our testimonies and win souls. We depart to reign in life as kings and priests of the Lord Jesus Christ. We depart to conquer evil and show forth the love of God in a dying world. Jude 24 and 25, and we can raise our right hand. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, Reverend Jennifer, for that benediction. Again, those of you who have tuned in tonight, I know that your heart has been blessed. If you're looking for a church home, if you're looking to give your heart to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, do it tonight. I tell you what, you just really think about it and be serious. It's done. Amen. Between you and God, just call on him and he will answer. Certainly, if you're looking for a church home, you know what we say. There's no place finer than Shekinah. Hey, if I don't believe it, what in the world? Fire me. <laughs> I believe it. And so come on down to Shekinah. And certainly, you will know there uh, what we say. Church, what are we saying? Blessings abound. Take care. Have a Merry Christmas coming up on Sunday. Join us there. We're having church 10 a.m. Check your land. Blessings abound. Wonderful. Brother Paul, um, just again, God bless you. God continue to strengthen you. And as I always challenge you, you remain focused. You listen to God. Handle everything wisely with responsible hands and God will keep on blessing. And so we know that's what you will do. Please give our love to mom and dad. Amen. Tell them it all went excellently, excellently. Amen. <laughs> and tell the children we'll see them in Bermuda. You know, I thought about it. Y'all going to Bermuda. We're going to Kenya. We still end up halfway around the world, away from each other. What kind of, anyway. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. All right. Take good care. God bless you, and thank you for being a blessing to us tonight. In Jesus' name. Everybody unmute, and you've got 28 seconds. Hi, everyone. Good evening, Good evening. 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 Thank you, Miss Karen. Bless you, Miss Carolyn. Hallelujah. Mother Molly and Sumner, Mother Grace. Oh, Bless you, Pastor Lightborn and Reverend Eunice. Amen. Happy anniversary. and Sumner, God bless you. Reverend Jackson, God bless everyone. All right, I think I'm going to go my face. Keeping that Thank video. <laughs> Thanks, Sue, for sharing. Done it perfectly. Everything oh, worked out. Yeah. 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 All right, yeah. bye. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Bye. bye. bye.